Assalamu alaikum students today we are going to talk about a very important topic that is corona virus and uh, we will discuss discuss this topic in a different aspects like uh, what are the possible medicines that can be used uh, for this uh, virus as we know that fda has not proved any drug uh, for this virus until now but still uh, lots of drugs are being used by different countries including korea japan thailand china so what are these drugs and we will also talk about the drugs that has been approved by FDA for the trials. Uh, before starting about the drugs, let's talk about the structure of uh, this virus and uh, uh, some facts. So, if you look at the structure of this virus, you can see in the center there is a genome of this coronavirus and that is single-stranded RNA. The genome of any viruses can be of different types like it can be single-stranded RNA, it can be double-stranded RNA, it can be single-stranded DNA, it can be double-stranded DNA. But for this virus, coronavirus, the genome is single-stranded RNA virus, uh, single-stranded RNA. This single-stranded RNA is coded with a protein, is covered with a protein that is called as capsid. Okay? And uh, outside of the cap uh, capsid, there is another protein that is called as envelope, protein layer. There is another protein layer that is called as envelope. Envelope is not present in all the viruses. There are some viruses who have uh, this uh, additional uh, covering. They are called as envelope virus, but there are some viruses who do not have any additional outer uh, uh, protein, envelope protein, so they are called as non-envelope viruses. On the envelope viruses, or uh, envelope uh, coating, you can see another protein that is called as spike protein, S protein. And this protein is very important for the entry, for the penetration of uh, this coronavirus into our body. We will uh, talk about it later. Before moving to the uh, pathophysiology and uh, medicines uh, for this virus, let's talk about the case uh, effects. Up till now, approximately 2,45,000 cases have been reported and approximately 10,000 deaths have been reported. Uh, uh, fortunately, 80,000 cases have been re recovered. Still, we have 1,47,000 active cases out of which 5% cases are very severe, rest of the cases are very mild. So now, let's talk about the penetration of this virus in our, into our uh, cell. To understand the penetration of coronavirus in our cell, you must know that every virus has some protein receptor present on the host cell for the attachment. Every cell has some receptors. For example, this is host cell. So every host cell has some receptors for the attachment of virus okay and the obviously these receptors are basically in, uh, not for the the purpose of uh, getting virus into our cell uh, these uh, have some other uh, useful purposes but unfortunately these receptors are used by some viruses uh, to get into our Cell. For example, uh, acid, uh, nicotinic receptor of acetylcholine is used by rabies virus for penetration into our cell. Uh, similarly, uh, T helper, the CD4 receptor, CD4 receptor that is present on the T helper cell is used by the HIV virus to get to into our cell. So basically these receptors are for the normal functioning of the cell but they are being used by viruses to get into our cell. Okay? And similarly, coronavirus has also a receptor on our body cells that it used to get into our cell. And the receptor name is, you must be very familiar with it, it is very common receptor. The receptor name is angiotensin converting enzyme receptor type 2 angiotensin converting enzyme receptor type 2 this receptor is basically used by this virus to get into our body getting it 
Clear? Okay, now let's see how this happened. As we know that angiotensin converting receptor, angiotensin converting uh, uh, receptor 